Starbeams Audio. Thank you for listening to the Starburns Audio Podcast Network. We have so many great comedy shows to add to your playlist. Just last week on Starburns Audio, in the premiere episode of the podcast, Musicals That Never Made It, hosts Gabe Gibbs and the gang are joined by Broadway's Austin Scott for a suspiciously Hamilton-sounding musical about the man who invented the roller coaster. On Small Doses with Amanda Seals, writer, director, and producer, Prentice Penny talks about his new film, Uncorked. On Gilbert Gottfried's amazing Colossal podcast, Gilbert and Frank Santa Padre had George Costanza on himself, Jason Alexander, to discuss the impact of Seinfeld and more. Search Starburns Audio on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any podcast platform for our full list of shows, with hosts including Quinta Brunson, Dave Ross, and many others. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Starburns Audio. Now, Enjoy the show, and remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep laughing. Starbeams Audio. Dan and Randy and Jay will share tales of folks so unaware they lack in grace and sometimes choose the life they choose will make the news. Breaking down each epic fail in Florida, there's half price mail. I'm happy to say they couldn't make this up. Dumb, dumb, so dumb, listen dumb, to dumb, our podcast dumb, jam dumb, with co host Arm and Dan. Dumb, dumb, and Bert, dumb, don't be a jerk. Dumb, Cause dumb, when the music gets the funny dumb, hits, dumb, and we are gonna dumb, take dumb, you down. Stick around. Make a sound, Hunker Town, East Dumb People Town. Hey, townies, welcome to a special episode of Dumb People Town. Population Tiger, you. King, Tiger King, King, Queen. DP Tiger King. I don't know. Dumb People. Dumb Tiger. DP, DP Tiger. I, either way, this is our wrap up show of the series, I guess, so far, because there's another episode well, that's coming we'll out. We'll get to that. that but yeah. this is, it's just the three of us. Uh, because we have been watching and over the course of one week or a week and a half. I think it was a week. Full week. I think it was exactly a week. Exactly a week. A week. We watched. Yeah, we, we, I'm proud of us. We, yeah. we barreled through all seven episodes yeah. to the uh, that are available now of the of the Tiger King. And we watched it with many of you guys, which was awesome to do the Instagram live. Sorry we didn't have a better setup in terms of microphones. We were shouting. Hey, we did our best. Well, we, we did the best we could. <clears throat> and we gave it to you and we did the best we could. And it was an interesting way to, to watch it, to be like, okay, we're starting right now. Mm-hmm. Go. And we went back through and read all of your comments. They were amazing. Thank you so much for everyone who participated. And from from Sarah Dunn, way out in Ireland, out yeah. to everybody who watched it with us. I believe Stephen Elton Yates watched it with us for a sure. couple of Oh couple yeah, episodes. he did. And it was what I did what I did love about watching it this way, I will say, and then we'll get into the last two episodes. So, so here's the way this this episode is going to be structured. If we'll this see. is cool this with is you, we'll hope. see. Because, <laughs> you know, we might get the best way plans. I mean, the next thing you know, we could also be owning tigers and no, breeding cubs. Never. never. <laughs> but what we do is, we, what I'd love to do is wrap up episodes six and seven because we haven't done it. Then in segment two, we'll sort of talk about the series on as a whole. Sure. And then the final segment so, of the show, Dan has some Where Are They Now updates. Right. The reason the we're doing this and the reason we thought this should be a whole episode before we jump into six and seven is that this really feels like minus some crazy stuff that would probably take it and make it not a dumb people tell oh, story. 100%. This I remember whole, when it was sent to me. Yeah. This whole thing feels like a number of dumb people tell stories wrapped up into one. Right. It's, so like the gubernatorial race could have been its own story. Right. Carol Baskin various things about Carol yeah. Baskin and anything Doc Antle did. All those did. cool cats and kittens. All you cool cats and kittens. Those things could have been Dumb People Town stories on their own. So this is like a collection of all of right. it thrown like into a Voltron a, of- thrown into a cage and we're going to now let them free and allow it to breathe. Sure. So let's talk about six and seven because stuff went okay. down in six and seven. Yeah, I, I, it's going to be hard for me not to remember. I mean, we obviously know how it ended. <laughs> sure, sure. So six and seven, basically... It's more Jeff Lowe, Jeff Lowe taking over. Well, it was the whole, like, the murder plot. And did they send whatever his name was, like, Little Mouth Angry Did they guy. send Alan... Alan, Alan Graves or something like that. Alan, yeah, Alan. Groves or... No, I don't know. No, that's not his name. Gra- you just wanted to be Graves because that's where they put dead people. Yeah. Uh, Alan, Alan Shallow, Shallow Graves. Graves. Yeah. 
Oh, jinx. So <laughs> no, it's it, he was uh, he went from being like I hate that motherfucker to, to, uh, to three thousand well, dollars. I'll do it. I'll, I'll take do it. his money. I, mean, I guess apparently I apparently I chickened out. Right. Like you had no, no control. Chickened out. Apparently. This, I guess, is hey, what happened. That's to me. what people are telling me is that I chickened out. Well, why don't you tell us? So they had the whole thing. <laughs> they had the whole thing of like uh, them finding out like Carol Baskin's bike path and like oh, Google, Google Earth, Earth Google Earthing where she was, and then it was who was. So they both hate each other. So it's mm-hmm. who's saying it to who? Like mm-hmm. is 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 Joe or Jeff? Who's driving that? We're gonna go murder Carol train. I think it's. It's clear to me that if you look at everything, like Carol has been, Carol Baskin was mentioned so many times by Joe Exotic that in the middle of the night, I woke up to pee and I stubbed my toe and my instant reaction was, God damn, Carol Baskin. <laughs> That's a pretty good uh, joke. God damn it, Carol Baskin. You, you Carol and Jeremiah Baskin. Watkins. God good. damn, Carol Baskin, don't do that to my feet. Uh, God damn, Carol Baskin. God damn, Carol, ba- Carol Baskin, you're going to do that to my feet. And so he's like unloading. I was mad at Carol Baskin for my toe getting stuck. She did the light bulb thing to your elbow. <laughs> she did. Shit. Patreon people will know. know. So, uh, um, they won't because that's coming out. But next they year. will. Know. They will eventually. Yeah. God uh, damn, Carol Baskin. So uh, he's like unloading the the uh, animals to other places. He he had that one moment where he talks about like realizing what he where did, did those he chimpanzees. send them all? So yeah. Je- well, so Jeff Lowe comes to him and basically says to him. The feds are on you. This is going down. Right. You did well, bad what was things. The, you used your money from the zoo to pay right. for your gubernatorial right. race, you which used, he, he and your didn't really have an race. answer. He did not have and an no, answer. No, 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 no. His Joe answer, Joe Exotic got up and he was like, all right. And then he started taking the animals out of the zoo. Right. He's like, I got to get him out. Excuse me. I've got some. Remember he talked about, he's like, those chimpanzees hugged each other. And he's the first time. Yeah. And he was like, think of what I did to them. Maybe maybe I kept them from doing that too. Yeah. You kept them from doing each other because you kept them in cages. You dummy. We also got, we can't forget to talk about. We finally, if this documentary built towards one thing, it was that human thumb Garrett, on a jet ski. <laughs> Garretson. Garretson. Yeah. Joe, Joe Garretson. Jeff. James. 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 John. So it's Jeff, Joe, Joe, and James. <laughs> Three J names that are more forgettable are than anything. Those are the most popular else. books of the Dumb People Town Bible. <laughs> 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 from the book of James. I, also from the book of Garretson. And Joe. <laughs> Garretson 215. He did that. Meanwhile, remember Joe? Eye of the Tiger. What What was the yes, song? Yes, it was Eye of the Tiger. Eye, Eye, Eye of the Tiger, which... Nah. Nah, nah, nah. How it much is, money did they pay for? They spent so much money look. just to use that. Yeah. I mean, I will say this. It was just one shot. It probably cost more than like two of the episodes to shoot yeah. to get the rights to that song. So that was one you shot. You think that Eye of the Tiger's yep. charging it a lot? It was one oh, shot. Yeah, yeah was, you're right. They probably Netflix, are. it was one shot. It was maybe... And if they didn't charge enough, someone in Survivor you know right now is going, I dichotomy. wish they would have charged about more. Because I bet it costs less money to get Survivor to play your living room live. That's right. Than it does to license We could have song. Survivor do the Dumb People Town theme right. song. It would be way cheaper to have them play Eye of the Tiger live for you than yeah. it would be to use yes. Eye of the Tiger I, in because a show. You're because you're licensing you're, it. And you're using the song. The That's song right. is but worth so use, much more than the Dan, live but you're, It's because you're using it in perpetuity. Of course, that right. too. But That's I mean, also, like, thing. it pays off so much more well. So he so much more well, you know, what I mean. so much better. So he goes through, and that slow motion of him on the jet ski was That's an like, FBI informant. If I've ever, if seen that it. guy didn't get laid off that shot of him he doing that, strip clubs, he owned strip clubs. He was getting laid off of a lot of. All bad right, so shit. James Garretson, and it's not Garriston, no, it's, it's Garretson. Garretson. So it's even that is done. But he also even his last name is done wrong. <laughs> he also gave you guys your favorite part. My of My favorite thing. quote ever in when episode they, when six. Joe was pr- pretending he was in Belize yep. and he was posting Facebook pictures of them in the ocean with his new friend Dylan Passage, the husband, husband Dylan Passage. Garrett said. That there is not Belize water. That there is Gulf water. Right. That That's there is Panhandle water. That and you there, guys lost. It. I <laughs> thought because someone had <laughs> tweeted us and said you are about to see, and I'm not going to tell you someone's reaction to a picture, uh-huh. six words, and I think it was only five words. That's that's pan. That's Panhandle water. Would be four. that there yeah. is. Panhandle that there, water. Yeah, that's, that's five. Yeah, five. Like it was five. I think someone said six. Will be the greatest line ever. So I kind of forgot about it. And then when they said it, 
it all came back to me when he said it, and mm-hmm. it was just the greatest line. That there is panhandle There's water. There's no way you could look at that and know that. And we also kept trying to figure out what type of store does he run. Yeah. He had, like, kids' toys, fans, lawnmowers, fans, ceiling fans, like, uh, Xboxes. Crossbows. Um, yeah, like, a toy or, cro- no, lemur. Toy crossbows, and then he had his lemur in there, which I'm sure the lemur wants to be in the goddamn <sighs> warehouse. Right. right. So it just... I love that, like, no narrator is reliable in this thing. That's what we were learning. But, no, like, that happened in six, and then you kind of... James Garrett. that when we also met the... Uh, a prosecutor, the federal prosecutor. Oh yeah, she, she was, was great. Buttoned up and awesome. She was awesome. I loved her. Yeah, she was Amanda. like a Charlize Theron character. She yes. was like ready. She kept to- reminding me of Shiv from Succession. She's like, did you guys I'm, watch Succession? I no, have I need to. I got to get into it. So I she did, she could have like yes. She, I'm like, why don't you just go punch everyone in the face? Okay, <laughs> and like, and then we'll say that the government said that was okay. Yeah, yeah. She had a square jaw and she was ready to rock. So I loved her, mm-hmm. but we also started to see a lot of Tim Stark. Now we had seen him before. The best oh, way I can no. describe Tim Stark, monkey other than shirt. the fact he's got a monkey in his shirt at all times. All time. At all times. Like when he's driving, which it's by like, the way, dude, that's like why Britney Spears got like called out. F- yeah. Putting her kid on her lap when she went to the Starbucks. monkey pizza. pizza and then him eating that same piece of pizza. Yeah. I'm like, I hope you get Every disease. Right. So you're the worst. Just get a baby Bjorn. In I'll, an office chair on, on his, his front porch. porch. Office chair on the front. If you're, on a chair, chair. if you're on a chair that rolls and you're outside of any establishment, something's gone wrong. Yep. Right. You shouldn't be there with that chair. Right. I agree. So he go he pours a ton of his money in to Jeff a new Lo- location. Into the new zoo down in over by Thackerville. The, yeah, over by the border. Right, because, because all people are going to become rich Texas. Texans are going to come up from there and dun- and poor Oklahomans aren't going to. Right, that's what they said, not us. Not us. That's that's James Garrettson's words. Yeah, they're going to go down there. And that's just, like a redneck plan, if I've ever heard one. That's just so oh, we know this land better than there aren't any rich Texans on the border of Oklahoma. I'll tell you that right now. Right, but they're going to come up for it because they're going to want to see it. So then. That's how you're going to get him. And then he invested a ton of his money. I guess he was going to bring his cats down there because mm-hmm. he needs cats. Mm-hmm. Dude needs cats. Listen. And so, and then Jeff screwed then, him. Then Jeff screwed him over. No shit. So yeah. Jeff, yeah, Dan. When how that, about, when, that's his when affliction. do you want to talk about? That's his affliction. When well, do you want to talk about t-shirts. Jeff Lowe and the nanny? That's at the end. Jeff what? Lowe. <laughs> that was like the fun tidbit at the end when he's talking about the nanny he wants to hire. Excuse me, uh, sexually harass. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, hire. Excuse me, hire. I mean, excuse me. And the wife in this, sa- this is maybe the saddest moment of the whole series. Yeah. Yeah. She tries the- to justify Jeff's awfulness. Yeah. She's just like, because she's now stuck with Jeff because she's got a ba- she's got his seed she's got inside his, of her. His affliction seed inside mm-hmm. of and her. And she's just like, growing. well, maybe they'll be. Maybe you know, she'll be by. by Lingual, and that's good because our I'm baby like, can start talking that language too. It's like, don't can we justify. please get you out of the emotional prison that right. Jeff Lowe has you in? Meanwhile, Doc is just minding his own. Doc Antle's like, oh, I'm not saying this on camera. Doc Antle knows all the laws. Doc Antle knows every rule. Doc know. Antle would. Curious, Doc me. Antle can tell you what 502 feet from a grade school is. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He knows exact. He can tell you exactly where you can stand. Mm-hmm. And you but can, apparently they raided, uh, and then we learned that at the end of seven, they raided yeah, his camp yeah, as well, which great. Anytime he was sitting on that elephant, I'm like, give that elephant a break, you fat boomer Sison. <laughs> I, I, Doc Antle was one of my hated, mm-hmm. I hated We can him. play this in the next segment. <clears throat> who did you hate the most? So Matt Jones. Oh, no, we're going to do the power rankings. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Next you, segment. Who do we hate the most? Because our buddy Matt oh, We'll get to that later. Let's right, we'll yeah, add that later. But, but so in seven, in seven, he is where it all comes down the court case and him making calls out of jail, like making a murder. Well, but so, so Joe gets arrested. He gets thrown in cuffs, but where? I forget like where he was. I'm in Florida. Didn't they just yeah. go down to Florida? Did they go to, is that what no, he they was? Showed, he was in they showed him. I don't know. Was that a reenactment? I think that was I a reenactment. I think that was an, oh, oh yeah. yeah that was he was a in a parking lot yep. somewhere yep. and they got him. They got him. They're like, here we go. Yeah. We got him on the wild, wildlife. Him and Dylan and Passage were on the run. They were on the run. Yeah. And he got him. Yeah, these where these cubs are gonna go. These where these cats are gonna die now. Out right. here in this Soon? house. I'm like, what? So he shot five. That was the other thing. It's like you shot I five know. tigers. He's like, I <sighs> euthanized. No, you shot them. You shot them. I know he did keep calling. I euthanized. euthanized them. They did not want to die at that Can, point. Do you think Joe Exotic can spell euthanized? No. 
Y O U T H. Joe Joe Exotic. Do you like so OJ euthanized Nicole Simpson and uh is that what happened? Is that how you want to describe so it? Joe Joe did screw up by using campaign and Ron Goldman I by campaign mm-hmm. monies using money from right. the zoo to right. finance his failed attempt. I mean, this is like and we should note we dream I, big, please. He got nineteen percent of the libertarian vote, which is still pretty bad. Was it just the libertarian? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't of the whole vote. Uh-uh. How do you know? That, somebody corrected me on it. On, on, oh, yeah, that was a pri- that them? was a primary to be the libertarian candidate. No, I think they were showing. No, he each got nineteen percent of, of the, the Oklahoma li- vote. You're, whoever corrected you is wrong. That is nineteen percent of the Oklahoma you think vote. So? Yes, yes, yes. 19% People are just of, like, he just says it like he just it is. says like he, he's One different. One in five I people like almost he says in it like Oklahoma it is. that voted. He's different. <laughs> he just says it like it is. He don't care what nobody says. Hey, 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 you know he's gay. Well, fuck that. I'm not going to vote for that Fruit Loop. You know, I like love Fruit Loops. Uh, Me too. Fruit Loops are so good, <laughs> underrated. And Corn Checks, I've been getting into that again. Really? Yep. Uh, but so... So in in the last in the last episode, yeah. which by the way I will say right now was not super satisfying for me, and I think a lot of people didn't feel satisfied by the last sure. episode, Seven. which is why there's going to be another episode. We'll right get into that. I think that we saw we didn't see enough Joe Exotic in the no. last episode. No. You only saw like heard him. a still shot of yeah. his horrible bangs in prison a couple <laughs> oh, times. Yeah. You saw like. You know, artists rendering of his mullet in court, which you know it's bad when the artist rendering, which makes everyone look good. Everybody, everybody looks good in a courtroom rendering. Mm-hmm. Everybody, mm-hmm. this guy looked like a piece of crap, like a clown, a of piece of crap, furrowed uh, brows. And yeah, with crap. We're not getting enough of him from the jail. And you, what you realized about him, and what I saw in Jeff it, Lowe went to jail. By the way, he's a felon. Oh yeah, huh? Jeff Lowe, felon. Tim Stark, so mad. He's got. I mean, even the monkey inside of his shirt was mad. <laughs> He's like he Jim Stark just couldn't get the monkey off his back. <laughs> couldn't get the monkey, monkey out of his, his chest. chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get he this monkey. He talked about that. He goes a lot of people say you got the monkey on your back. Put that monkey yeah, in the yeah. front, and you're good to go. And you're like, "No, you aren't." So, right. I mean, how many relationships has Tim Stark been in where the woman was like it's the monkey or me and then look at where yeah, he's, he's at. with the monkey right. they don't even finish that i sentence. i i monkey or me i want that monkey in a moment where to Tim bite his fucking to rip face, his face off, off. To, to rip, rip his, his face off to Why rip you his that face you're getting pizza and free rides woman who had if you type in woman a little bit of it into google it will say woman who had face, face. that's it woman, woman who, who had face, face. <laughs> dan you could try it right now woman in, woman who had face woman who had face I don't want to see it. I'll type it. No, no. It's just a Google. It it will be ripped off off by chimp. chimp. Okay, ready? Woman who had face. Woman who had face. Face. Who had had face. face. Next thing is ripped off by chimp. (laughs) Is it? Transplant. Right. (laughs) What does it say? It it, it goes ripped ripped off and then transplant. There you go. It's ripped off by chimp. Okay. And then the next one, if you just said woman who had, it's acid thrown in her face. All right. So why is Google, our thing was, why is Google trying to- Why are they so anti-women? Yeah. The misogyny of women. But this, these guys, what we learned about them all the way through episode seven is that no matter how big you think you are, no matter how much you feel Mm -hmm. like you're the king of your castle, if you are dumb and if you don't know how to do it right, you're gone. And if you're going to break the law, you're going to be gone. Like the, gone. the best moment was when he was in the courtroom. And he said, not in the courtroom, when he's running for governor and he's up there with all the other candidates in the debate. And he oh, made no. a joke that he thought was going to get laughs and then it didn't. And it just fell so flat. He was the only 11. It was like, oh, yeah. These are regular. Tell the joke. Remind the joke. I can't even remember what the joke is. I don't is. remember. What I don't even remember. Either. All I know is it he, was sad. It was super, super sad. He was up there and I, I'm. And trying. he told the story. He did a thing and then it was like, I'm a gay so-and-so like that. He like worked that into her. It's like, know your audience. <laughs> know your audience, man. Cause no one laughed and everyone was just up there. And it's like, oh no, you're not at one of your shows at one of your thing where people are just laughing. Cause they're like, right, this isn't a funeral where it's supposed to be fun and lighthearted. Uh, see the light. We'll get into all Country that. Music Let's so take a easy. break. Let's, Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about our, our feelings on the series as a whole. Uh-huh. We'll do our hate rank- rankings, maybe hate some rankings. other stuff. And then, and then, in the, and then in the segment three, we're going to talk about where they, 
now and then. Which will probably be covered in the final episode. But we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, Who it's, cares? It's Dumb People Town, the Tiger King wrap-up. And if you haven't seen Tiger King, we're giving it all to you right now. Yeah, you don't have to. You, yeah. can, you don't have to go through what or I Or watch it and, or see, watch and it. see if we're right. That's right. All right. right. You guys, we'll be right back with more Dumb People Town right after this. Stick around. Make a sound for more Dumb People Town. Hey guys, Rand and Dan and Jay here. Uh, we all want you to do the right thing to keep your bodies healthy in the long run. It's something that we try and do right now. Uh, but even though we try really hard to eat kale salads and drink the green smoothies mm-hmm. that we make, and I try and do that myself, it is still most likely we're not getting all the essential nutrients we need on a daily basis. Right. And if you're a woman who's looking for something like that, this is why we want to talk to you about Ritual. It's the obsessively researched vitamin for women. That's right. Ritual's essentials have the nutrients. Most of us don't get enough from daily food, all in their clean, absorbent food. So if you're a woman and you're looking for something that has no shady additives or ingredients that can do more harm to your body than good, all you have to do is take uh, two easy-to-take capsules, provide nine nutrients to your body to support a strong foundation for your Health. Easy to take, and right now is the time to take these things from D3 to Omega 3. Ritual is essential for women, helps fill the gaps in a woman's diet. Uh, no nausea capsule design is gentle to on an empty stomach, which sometimes those things you're not allowed, you know, you can't take them on an empty stomach. Right. You can take this on an empty stomach. Uh, there's a mint tab in every bottle that keeps things fresh. You don't get that sort of fishy aftertaste common with most omega-3s. Mm-hmm. For obsessive label readers, all of Ritual's vegan-friendly, sugar-free, non-GMO, gluten-free, gluten-free and allergen-free ingredients and, uh, and from their sources, uh, are out, uh, yeah, for the out whole there world for the whole see. world they're to see. They're not hiding any of yeah, it. Yeah, they're not, they're not hiding any uh-huh. of that a stuff. A subscription is really easy to start, and it's, uh, it's, also, it's, it's very easy to snooze. It's only a dollar a day to have all the essential nutrients your body needs delivered every month, no strings attached, so better health doesn't happen overnight. And right now, Ritual is, a, is offering our listeners 10% off during their first three months. That's right. So you can fill the gaps in your diet with Essential for Women, a small step that helps support a healthy foundation for your body. All you have to do is is visit ritual.com slash DPT to start your ritual today. That's 10% off your first three months at ritual.com, R-I-T-U-A-L.com slash DPT. Hey guys, are you looking for a way to stay connected with loved ones during this time of social distancing? Let me say this. The best gift that we've given our mom in the last several years uh, has been the skylight frame that we got her. I love this thing so much. I just sent her two photos this morning, and as I was talking to her on FaceTime, she almost started crying because I sent her two photos of my daughter. They showed up and they, right then in her frame. And they showed up right up in her skylight frame. Let me explain awesome. it is, what it is to people who yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. what it is. So the skylight frame, it looks like a, a beautiful picture frame that you can get. You can get in black or white. Uh, But it's a screen. It's like a little computer screen right there that uh, you set up in in the house of the person or you Mm -hmm. have... Connects to the Wi-Fi. Connects to the Wi-Fi. You can preload it with photos, but I'm assuming if you're doing it in this time right now where you're not interacting with somebody... They can, you can then get and send to yeah, them. You have an email address that goes specifically to that frame. Any picture you send there automatically uploads and that person so to get to see it. If you're like us, we take pictures of our kids. We take pictures of ourselves. We take pictures of beautiful things. And, uh, and you want to send those to the loved one. And it immediately uploads into the frame. And I'm telling you. It's like a gift every time you send a GIF. It's mm-hmm. a gift that keeps giving <laughs> to it's, people. And, yeah. that it, and so if you're distanced from someone you love right now, and we all are. Right. This is a great way to stay connected and keep people involved in your life. I love this product so much. Again, this is probably the best thing we've gotten for our, our mom as a gift. I love that we can- Mother's Day, right around, right the, around corner. the corner. I love that we can email uh, photos from anywhere. So I'll be on, you know, when we were on a trip, when we were traveling around, we used to be like, hey, this is what we're doing right now. Check these pictures out. Check this hike out. Check this out. And we would send it to her and- Absolutely great. It's 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your skylight, and I don't know who wouldn't, it's literally the best gift you can give a relative. Uh, they'll offer you a full refund. That's or how, a friend or someone you just don't exactly. see. Exactly. Uh, you can tap the heart button to let the sender know that you love the photo, which is really great. Oh, if you cool. receive yeah, one yeah. of these things, again, it is the greatest thing that we could have ever given our mom. She loves it so much. Special offer right now. You can get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code DPT. That's right. Get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com and enter the code DPT. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com. Use the promo code DPT. I love these guys. I love that they support us. It is the best gift we have given to our mom. You get on it right now. 
Hey guys, welcome back to Dumb People Town. I want to remind people about two things. Number one, Dan has an unbelievable nightly podcast called The Good Night Show. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed to it, uh, let's do it. Let's. Here, here's the thing. I don't know if you guys understand, and and this is a really because yeah, you get told thing. it a lot. You get told to rate, review, and subscribe. And when, the reason that that is is because it moves. It it it, it creates a better presence for you in any sort of like. Uh, sorting or charting or yep. recognizable. It's how people get put on like uh, new and noteworthy type sections. It also is a thing that advertisers look at. And that's a, one of the biggest ways we get support right now. Everybody you love can't do live performances, but they can still do podcasts. We, we are lucky that we've been doing it for a while. So hopefully you love what we do and you can continue to support us by just, it's so simple rate review, subscribe, and then tell everybody who's looking for content and things to do during this time. Here's a podcast that I love and make it Scarborough Country Virus, make it Dumb People Town, make it the Good Night Show. Right. So you should be, you should, this is just the deal. I'm just going to tell you right now. Make it as we, well, we yeah, have, we have time. When too. we have time. I have another one. You too. should be subscribed to all of our podcasts. I'm just going to say this Why right not? now. Can't Do it. Hurt. Right. You have time right now. What, what What does it hurt even just to subscribe uh, and rate and review it? It's very easy to do. And we all have that kind of time right now. So Dan's podcasts are Dumb People Town. Pen Pals and the Good Night Show. Our podcasts are Dumb People Town, which you're already a part of. Uh, View from the Cheap Seats is our sports podcast, mm-hmm. and Sklarbro Country, the virus episodes Can I ask or you guys, edition is our daily podcast. And yes. I love that daily. Thank it's you. It's such a good easy listen. Thirty minutes. That's what I'm trying to do too at nighttime yeah. for people. Yeah, you have a good do. like uh, daytime energy vibe for everybody. I have like a let's go to sleep now type vibe. Whatever works for you, we're trying to give you those options. But I have an important question before we get into this. Yeah, and I have one more uh, podcast I want to tell people. On just- Cheap Seats, yeah. are you guys going to be talking about this potential horse tournament? Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, for okay. sure. NBA Horse, yes. which is yeah. a TV show that we pitched with uh, one of the producers from uh, Carson Daly. Yeah. For us to host oh, a, really? a horse yeah. show yeah. Yeah. would have been amazing. Would have been awesome. But maybe you guys can like jump on Hot Mike or something. Yeah, maybe. Or watch we'll it see. with people. Uh, by the way, say, uh, Jordan Harbinger, who was on our... Um, who mm-hmm. did our podcast. Yeah, he did yeah. a mini for us. He's fantastic. He has a great show, the, Har- the Jordan Harbinger Show, which is a fantastic podcast. We're going to tell you guys all, go check it out. Check it out and rate and review and subscribe to his thing as well. Uh, he's a friend of the podcast and has been telling everyone about Dumb People Town. And Thanks. so I want to return the favor uh, and just tell you that it, I've listened to it. It is fascinating and interesting. He digs into like incredible story. So kind of it's tangential to Dumb yeah. People Town because he takes like insane uh, stories and really digs into them uh, in an interesting way. Jordan Harbinger show, check it out. And uh, that's it. Uh, nice. so all right, let's get, let's get into a our, wrap up of the entire series. The series as a whole. So here's what I think we all have agreed that if you have to own a big cat, nobody does. <laughs> nobody does. If you have to own a big right. cat, and this goes for Carol Bass, like and- a zoo barely does. In fact, it sh- probably shouldn't. Agreed. Okay. If you have to own a big cat, mm-hmm. then you clearly had something that happened that was out of your control early on in your life so or at some like, point yes. in your life when you were 17. It's about power. It's about you exerting power over these animals. And suddenly, in many ways, it turns to you exerting power over the people who work for you and those animals. Mm-hmm. That's what we realized from because, this show. Because here's the deal with the tiger, okay? Or are cats as big as that we're talking about with these yeah, ligers, other animals? Lions. Lions, ligers, tigers. Panthers, Liger, panthers God, God. Idiot. Is that in order, within captivity, you need such a massive support system just to keep one of those tigers oh, alive for the life of the Walmarts nearby you so that we get you the need return meat. so much food. Mm-hmm. That's number one. You need trainers who officially, who are like trained through schooling, who understand how yeah. to treat the animals and how to keep them in mm-hmm. a good place. Mm-hmm. You need uh, doctors and medical staff in case anything happens to mm-hmm. The, you need space and and space. Space. Huge. You need yeah. space. You need okay. women to deprogram so you can separate them from their <laughs> the families. families. And then right. no, 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 that's something else. Yeah. But so, so those are the things you need. Those, option, those are the things you need to do the thing that is unnatural, which is keep an animal like that in captivity. Right. So what you need, Dan, you said this while we were watching the show and it was one of the most brilliant comments that was made throughout the whole oh, series. Thanks. I don't know what you're going to say. So th- he said, you know how much it costs to keep a tiger alive in, in, in our zoo? 
are in this place zoo, ten thousand dollars. Doc Angel. I can do it for three thousand dollars. Dan says, you know how much it costs to keep an animal alive in Africa? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero dollars. Or you could contribute right. to a wildlife refuge yes. that is making sure that they're protected from yes. poachers in Africa. You could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would cost you nothing. Agreed. Then you could be the tiger. That then I would call you the tiger king. Look, you I, give I more gave, money than anybody. I You're gave, the king. I gave two hundred fifty thousand dollars to this natural nat natural Congrats. reserve. You're the tiger king. Where people find. Look, you know what? By the way, I, I don't even mind like safaris where people come no. to You're going Africa. Where they are. You go where they are. You run that risk. By the <laughs> way, Joe Exotic, you could run in Oklahoma in just the space of the building that you yourself burned down. You could have mm -hmm. run a gay whorehouse there and made more money than yeah. in Oklahoma. And, and in my opinion, a way better documentary. Would have been so much more fun. Mm -hmm. Call that the Big Cat Ranch. There you go. Right? <laughs> Everything's a ranch. Yeah, yeah. why are Every all those like whorehouses are ranches. in Nevada? They're ranches. The ranch. Bunny Ranch, the Cat, the cat ranch. ranch. I don't know. Yeah, they're all ranches. Dan. I think they should be called, there should be one called the Hidden Valley Ranch because that's what people should call their nether regions, yeah. the Hidden Valley. Or it's creamy. Or I would say, if you're going to do a ranch, a gay ranch in Oklahoma, call it a dude ranch. Right. Yes. That's the definition of a dude you ranch. You called it the dude... I'm telling you, people who are closeted in Oklahoma because it is Oklahoma, sure. you won't get, you know what I mean? Sorry That's it. That. It's okay. People are closeted in Oklahoma because it is Oklahoma. Uh -huh. You, this is a place for you to go, a safe refuge for right. you, right? To, to, to let your inner way. animal come out. It's a re, it's an animal refuge for you to go to the things you've Welcome to always the dude ranch. Joe, you, yeah, no one would have been mad at you. No, but you could add horses. People right. don't get mad if you have horses. Right. The only thing you would have gotten caught is feelings. That's right. You were catching feels, feelings. Catching That's it. The feels. feels. That's it. Uh, Look, that so, would have been a much so Dan, better that thing. was a beautiful thing that you said, so but true. I'll never forget. Cost this you know something I don't know that we talked about now that we're going to do a full series sure. wrap up? Yeah. That fucking pizza place they open. Oh my god! And the meat was the was the, oh. the meat, meat was the thrown away. They loved Walmart. their pizza. It made me question. Every, it made me want pizza. So we do pizza every Friday night. We do. We have pizza night. We're okay. What is what is? How, first of all, let me guess. You go There's to trade. Yep. Okay. Three pizzas. No. Two. Because they're no. We make. They're they're. Well, everybody little, gets their own little. pizza? Everyone gets their own personal pizza, and then whatever you don't finish, that's your breakfast slash lunch tomorrow. Ooh. I went to a burrito place the other day. Yeah, and that's your. And I I bought my breakfast burrito for the next day. Oh, that's good smart. man. Good man, Dan. Were that's you the a, one that's who said head, that's my head thing? Dan, were you the one who said every woman orders breakfast? No, the Mexican pizza at Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give I, sometimes credit. I've been that woman. I'm gonna give Becky Robinson I'm every woman. Becky Robinson ordering Mexican tacos. Becky Robinson is so funny. I love her Instagram. Love her. She just had a little bit on on her Instagram that said, and I'm going to paraphrase this, but it was so brilliant. she's like, I can't wait to meet a guy who I love so much that I'm willing to share my actual Taco Bell order with. Great. Ooh. She's like, $17.99, this thing, that <laughs> thing, this <laughs> thing, fries from McDonald's on the drive up. It was so good. Oh, that's she's great. And best. I'm like, look, that's so, like I relate to you so much, girl. That's what it is, all right? This guy, these guys are so putting out pizzas with the meat, meat that they was refused from. I mean, this is expired meat. Expired meat. So mm -hmm. this is the meat that didn't go to the tigers, that did didn't go to it Cowie. Returned, that or, didn't yeah. go to Cowie. Right. That then st this is like three pizza generations meat. of being rejected, and now it's on the pizza. Ugh. I mean, that was called. I the, shudder at that. I sh game. that was I that was rough to watch. I did not like watching them eat that. I, so so I think this I, I think this show could it have just been, exposes how shitty. This well, let me ask you. Do you, do you have? Was. We can either do a hate rankings or I was gonna ask. Do you have a? For you, what was the best moment of watching the show of the series, and what was the worst moment? So for me, the best moment was the Wave Runner. Me too. Like J James, James Garrison on the Wave James Runner. James Garrison on it because right. it felt Runner. like it was from a different right. movie. show. It, it was nothing, it was fun. Right, nothing's getting hurt except them waves. He was I mean, shredding them waves. That was true. <laughs> that, 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 that Wave Runner was true. working hard. So. Straight. That, that wave, wave Runner was working if over. Wave, Whose idea do you think that was? His. <laughs> James. Do you think it that was? was James. It was because he like gave a look like you getting this. Like he wanted to make sure they knew right. that they were getting the well, slow mo. You know, he said as they were out there. Well, I got a Wave Runner if you guys want to shoot that. Right. 
and they're see, like, right now, if I, I could find that, if I could find a GIF of that, someone sent it to us and of him on the wave runner, yes. okay. oh, yeah. but it was before we knew what it was. Oh, okay. it was before we knew what it was. It was just, spoiler people. Hey man. And I looked at that water when I was looking on, I was like, wait a minute, that's not Belize water. That <laughs> there is panhandle, panhandle water. water. That might be your favorite moment. But like panhandle water. If, and that there is panhandle water is my favorite. Because I, I want us to be back in a society where we can all hang out. Right. And I like, I want one of you guys to text me and be like, Dan just uh, just shipped and made uh, deep dish pizza from Chicago, and my response will just be me, like just that guy on the wave runner. That's <laughs> Dan, how you tell you ever, people I'm Dan, on my way. Have you ever yeah. been on a wave runner? Yes, the in, in the Ozarks. It's the best. Yes, right. I rented Didn't one. We do I've it, never, Ran? No, I've never been on. I've been I on an ATV, I, but I've never been on I a wave. I've been on a wave ATV. Run. We pop wheelies in ATVs, and we were like, that's dangerous. But so the super dangerous. So the thing that just is crazy to me is. That like what it has exposed is that there are no good people. I saw an interesting post and I don't know how I don't like it, but I don't like it. Okay. Okay. I don't know how I don't like it. Maybe I don't like it because it's true. Okay. I love the guy who posted it. He's our buddy, Joe DeRosa, who I just yeah, love, love, love. Joe. Okay. Yeah. He's our friend. He's somebody that I truly, truly love as what a person. What did he do? He posted a picture of- uh, Carol Baskin, uh, of, jo of Joe Exotic. Uh-huh. And it said Republicans, oh, or, I saw that. and yeah, then yeah. Carol Baskin had said liberals. Right, and I'm like, I don't know if that's a. First of all, Republicans and liberals aren't the two sides. Well, of whatever that he said, right. conservatives yeah, and like conservative and the liberals. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, you know, I don't know if conservatives would accept Joe Exotic because he is gay. Like, mm -hmm. so that's, and I don't know if Carol Baskin is a hundred percent right a liberal. I think it's like it's more like bleeding heart and shoot you in the face like i, I sure. it's a different thing so i'm not sure if that really sums them both up but i think it does sum up the notion that you can't neither one like, of them the thing that bothered me the most about carol baskin is like where was where's don lewis and you don't have a good story a good don enough is. story by the way american at american butcher as a fan of the show big fan of pen pals as well sent me video of their meat grinder that they have because he he is what is he's like one of the most yeah. foremost butchers in the country yeah um Sent me the meat grinder. He goes, "This is the same meat grinder that Carol Baskin had." And you and he put, put a you he, could put a body. In he there. put a human in there you, just to show you. Yeah, yeah, he's like, "Look, this is my look, cousin Jeff, is, who I don't like." For, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's for the, it's for the show. I like get in, Jeff. Get in there. But bro. He, he showed me. He's like that little meat grinder. She said she had that little do nothing meat grinder. This is what it is. Okay. And he's like, "You could put anything you <laughs> want in there." So, so I'm just saying, I don't know where Don Lewis. Her story. I don't know where Don Lewis is. I don't like your relationship with your weird ass husband, Prince Charles. And Prince Charles. And I don't know why you're not paying your volunteers. You. Ha I know you're a nonprofit, but you're making tens. All of right. Thousands so, so, but so, let's get so into this because I think this series could have been called The Tiger King, but it also could have been called Who, who do, do You Hate, hate the more? more? Who do you hate the most? Right. I hate parade. Hate parade. Hate parade. Who do you hate the most? Whatever you want to call. Dan, you hate parades. So there you go. <laughs> I, I, other than Mardi Gras parades, yeah, I've never. What been about a the one you were in where you guys were the? That MC. was Mardi Gras. Okay, parade. Fine. It was great. So when Mardi I went Gras, to Soulard, way, when I went to Soulard for Mardi Gras, great parade. But as a rule, I'm just like. Mardi Gras, by the way, might have been the thing that spread COVID. A lot of it, I know. Okay. Yeah. So let's, so, so, so where we're at right now is we want to create a, who do you hate the most? Uh, I guess top bracket. Power bracket. Well, power, number one is always going to be Joe exotic for me. Joe exotic. None of this happens without him. Agreed. Yeah. I, I 100% agree. And the thing is what was so sad was they showed those early videos and his thoughts were, of, he's like Dennis Miller. Like back in the day, Dennis Miller was like a pretty lucid thinking, like smart guy. His and thoughts now he's were, like, oh, but it got clouded. His thoughts were like so much about helping animals out. Right. And how they should never be living cage. in Oklahoma. They shouldn't Even be in bred. Oklahoma, he said. And they shouldn't be bred and they shouldn't be this. And but, but when you start to need money, that's and right. When you start to have an operation That's going, right. and, and when you start to have mm -hmm. straight men that you're converting as gay and, because you <laughs> somebody said once I'm probably not converting, but like any getting any, them to perform sexual acts any, on you so that they can have meth, you need to support. Yeah, them. He, killed, entity, he killed a kid. Entity or business or program that involves animals and money will mm -hmm. corrupt the life of the animal. Always. 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 And, Always. and horse and. racing, dog racing, it doesn't matter what it is. It, dog it can be fighting, circus shows. Dog fighting, horse yes. racing, dog Anything racing, will, circus. Will, will corrupt the life of that animal. That's right. Because so it's the in the animal name of doesn't you have wanna, to make money. Animal doesn't want to balance the ball on their nose. 
They don't. They, they don't. want. They want to be an animal. They want to be an do animal. The simple thing, which is eat and shit and sleep. That's if all animals do. If a baby seal gets eaten by a whale, that was his or her purpose. Right now, some people it. are going to be. Well, what about beluga whales that have to? They can't. I'm not talking about them. No, nope. they can't live anywhere else. No. I'm talking about anytime you've chosen to put something in a scenario. That's right. For your for profit. It's going to corrupt the animal. It is life. not good for the animal, and it's and, it, and, it, and once you're up against, the, you need the mighty dollar to keep it going. That's right. right, because like we said, you get behind the eight ball immediately. It's like going. It's like so. Who's on the? So let's start on the bottom of the power ranking and work our way back up. Okay, very bottom for me is SAF, but SAF is still I don't, complicit. I, I in don't. What happens SAF there. keeps supporting. I, I look. I support SAF. I think SAF seems like a smart. Lucid person. But, oh, I'm not saying I like. But Saf. I'm saying Saf in this role keeps oh. fighting to support Joe throughout the whole thing. Saf racing to get back to the animals seven days after losing. I'm like, no, right. no. yeah. But and some people have said to me, well, you know, ex cons have a hard time. I get all that, but at some point you make a choice, and so if I would I'm ranking say my hate. Saf's on the list, but I'll put her at the bottom. I can't figure him, out. I would put him, him, him on him. the bottom. I'm sorry. I him, would put. Him, him. I would put above him all the people who show up and pay money to see the animals. They're complicit in it as well. Okay, yeah, the crowds. You are, the crowds, you are complicit in this as well. Sure. All the people who want to get a picture with them in a cub in a, in a, for a scene, for right, an Instagram right, photo, right. you are complicit Then I throw in well. their Walmart. Uh, then with go, their meat policy? Joel, Joel Dial. Joel Dial. Joel Dial. Josh Dial. Josh, Josh Dial. Dial. Josh Dial. Well, you might learn something about Josh that'll move him up later on. Okay, okay. fine. Yeah. I don't so, like to. What about Cowie? I feel bad for him. He feels like Cowie a, might be near the bottom. Cowie the and Saf are kind of hanging out with yeah, each those two other. Dudes, they're fine down there. And I would put way, way down there, I would put uh, Travis's mom. She was a bit of a victim in this, although she was also kind of complicit she, for a while. She allowed her son to be. She there. allowed her son, and then she and I would showed up. At that and I would way. put Travis down around there, and I would put mm -hmm. the other husband who John Finley. John, John Finley, Finley. I'd put him down there, and I would put the newest husband, Pass, down all near the passage. passage. Pa Dylan, Dylan Pass, Pass. Dylan Pass. Yeah. They're all down. All, on, those guys all those feel guys like all, victimized. Okay, who are your mid ranks? Mid rank people are oh, and I would put the woman who was driven down by her father who got out of the doc animal situation. Oh, yeah. She's, she's way, way down, down at the very bottom. But she, yeah, very but bottom. then like you get into like Amanda, the prosecutor. She's not even on. She's the list. not even on the list. I don't hate her. I don't even hate her. Right. She's like way, way, way down at the bottom. Right. I actually like her. Right. Um, but yeah. then there are no real like mid levels. So they're the mid level. You go? You go so with the Tony mid Stark's brother, whatever Bill Stark or whatever the hell his name was. <laughs> mid level, I would maybe put like. Jeff Lowe's wife. Jeff Lowe's wife because she's bad because she was feeding balloons to tigers and she <laughs> and also yes. stuck with Jeff Lowe, okay, but yeah. like she got strangled by him. Didn't she get strangled by him or was that another wife? I, who knows? Like, maybe another she wife. Track of Whatever. If you strangle one abuse. woman, and, he I, definitely and I would and I would put in the middle there, I'd put James Garretson somewhere in the middle. I, I would. He's, he's a bad. He's not a good he's dude. Not, yeah, he's in the middle. But he's, he's in, in the, the middle. middle. He's a yeah. mid range. And then I would right. maybe put Baskin's new husband somewhere in that middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so the, the, that's that. He, he's just trying to stay alive. He's trying to stay alive. He's trying to protect his wife. And I think he likes Santa's, a good, he likes a good fight with like, and he also, redneck who's and like, he also, I'm going to take you down. He's and like, he also, no, like, <laughs> he also likes to be on a leash. Right. Where do you put, uh, Bill Sugar? What was his name? Bert Sugar. <laughs> I put him in the middle. <laughs> I put him in the put middle. Put him in the middle because he was like, you're staking your claim to this piece of trash. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Don't open your mouth. <laughs> I tried to make I tried, him. I his teeth. No, it's more like this. I tried to make I him understand. Booty. You got to understand. I tried to make him understand. Like he mm -hmm. can't even breathe through his nose <laughs> because he has destroyed all the Nasal passages. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Rand is coughing now. Uh, yeah, no, that guy. Like he's him. somewhere in the middle, but he's heading up the the hate. He's ladder. like literally one month away from speaking out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah out of trick, this, doing yeah, a trick, yeah, tracheotomy. Yeah. yeah, he is like that. So but, he's in the middle for me too because he's just bad. I mean, now, I, now we're into the top. He's tier. bad because right. he was. He's trying to. He hitched his horse to this guy. Top yeah. tier. Joe is my number one. Joe whoa, is your way. Wait, wait, wait. Top tier. On your way up to the top tier. On the way up to the. Carol's top. in there. Carol's in there because Carol Baskin. She's at the bottom. You put her below Doc. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because Doc's yeah, ruining I, Doc's ruining lives. So Carol, to human me, lives and animal. Carol lives. to me 
not knowing the names of her volunteers and not paying them money. Yeah, but at least they get a free t-shirt on it. <laughs> oh, that's true, Dan. That's true. All right, I, I take that. <laughs> no, but not knowing the names of the people and not paying them any money means that she's a terrible human being, especially in this day and age when yes. she's making thousands and thousands. Just of- the fact she rides her bike without a helmet. That, and has the helmet hanging from the bike too. If you're not going to wear it, don't leave it on the bike. Right. So she clearly didn't have it on the bike. She's like, I don't want this to, I want my hair to be what it, it is. It is highly probable that she murdered Don Lewis. Oh, now, yeah. now, I put Don Lewis right above her because Don Lewis started a relationship. All he did was cheat on all his wives. Cheat yeah. on his wife. By comparison, I'm saying all he did. Yeah. Cheat on his wife and go after, literally, as he's driving, like in a predatory way, go after a, a crying, crying girl, girl on the side of the road. Not to be like, hey, do you want any help? Well, someone tell you that worked out for Carol Baskin. It did. Hold this gun on me, and this will be. This will foretell what our relationship. You can't put him above Carol Bass. As in the worse, on the I'll higher, put her on the lower. I'll put him right below Carol Bass. Okay. Right. So Carol's Carol is awful. Don Lewis, then Carol Baskin, then Doc. then Doc Antle. By the way, all the women that Doc Antle has, they're down with. I mean, it goes Jeff Lowe, then Doc, then Joe Exotic. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff Lowe, Lowe is terrible. Jeff Lowe is awful. Jeff- and the second he put a cub in a suitcase and rolled it you, through the if lobby. That guy, if, that, if that guy walks up to you in the attire he normally wears yeah. and you agree to give him money, yep. something's on you. It's on you. He does he, not look like a businessman. <laughs> no. What about him makes you think he can run a business? I'm like his affliction. He's got full bandana. pockets. I can tell because they're like, hanging out through what, the rip. You, you, I mean, you, you look like you're at the Sturgis Festival 365 days out of the year, yeah. and you don't know how to ride. You a look like you get your ass kicked at the Sturgis Festival for bitch. wearing those pants. Uh, I will answer my own question before we go to break. Is uh, my most hated part was the baby tigers in there pulling them, pulling the them out. Yep, and I couldn't didn't even have to watch. You couldn't it even watch it, and I watched and I couldn't handle it. I think that was my worst. Joe part. Exotic is the worst. He is the worst. He is, he is not. The worst. There is a tragedy to him, and I will say, growing up gay in Oklahoma or wherever he grew up, I'm sure that he is went through some trauma. But I'll that tell you is, something: there are a lot of people who grew up gay in Oklahoma who didn't ruin many animals' lives and many people's true. lives. True. Just because so, you went through a hard time, it is not easy. We're not saying it is simple. Right. It might we're make not you difficult, it. but it doesn't need to make you a monster. It's right. a, you don't have. You don't. You, it, it's not. It doesn't absolutely translate into you becoming that guy. Right. And also he never dealt with any of his problems or issues. He blamed them all on Carol Baskin, who is, by the way, not a great person, probably murdered her husband, probably, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. probably murdered her husband, who in my opinion, probably deserved it because he was a bad person in his own right. But like, maybe he didn't deserve to be murdered, but like, you know, they, he probably was not great to her. I'm sure he wasn't. And she, she got rid of him, right. and now she has this. She's not paying her workers. It's fishy right. what's happening. His family doesn't even have a couch. I mean, I His will say this. I will say this, Dan. I felt when he... <laughs> that was, that that was, might have been one of the funniest parts. That was my part. favorite scenes, too. Hey, you want us to shoot these in two separate chairs? No, climb into that uh, love seat together. This chair and a half. Uh, <laughs> chair and a half is for one person. That's why it's a chair and a half. It's not a two-person chair. So, <laughs> And mother and daughter who looked the same age. I know. If she's that, only 14 years older than that. If they, that <laughs> describe... <laughs> if that doesn't describe... That's a metaphor that's for their, their, whole their whole lives. Two people having to sit in a chair and a half. That's... <laughs> that is the metaphor for uh, Don Lewis. It's fun to laugh life. at other people's problems. Um, <laughs> oh man! No, I, I, I think that Carol. Uh, there was a joy that I felt when I saw this guy, and I don't even like Carol Baskin. I'm just saying when this redneck douchebag mm-hmm. was like shooting dummies and blowing up yeah. trees and saying, "I'm coming to get you. I'll put your." bitch head in yeah, this thing yeah, yeah. and was like in threat, a jar. throwing yeah. out threats. I don't throwing care. Out. Throwing out like actual threats. violent yeah. threats. Yeah, like they By were the way, t-shirts at the halftime of a Clippers Dan, game. if someone, if somebody threatened you publicly, put it on the thing over and over again like that, you'd be like, kill this son of a no, bitch. No, no, no. What she did, him in jail. what yeah. she did was almost worse than killing him. She kept him she, alive. She kept him alive and she took all his money and she, and, she, him, and she roped him into some big thing. She's like, I got more resources than you and you're going to go down and the more you fight me and I he, got my resources. He engaged, so he went into a tiger cage and he got, he got taken bit. down. He got, he got bit, bit and he got taken down and so there was some joy in that shot. So and flight again, in that for me. it is Joe Exotic, yep. Doc Antle, yep. Jeff, Jeff Lowe, Lowe 
Carol Baskin, and then Don Lewis, and then we're off into the other thing. Uh, oh. Those are no Tim Stark's. Tim up there, Stark's too. up there. He's too. shitty too. Yeah, Tim Stark. Tim, Tim Stark's Stark maybe ahead of Carol Baskin. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick break. Okay, we'll yes. take a quick we'll break. We're going to find out where wrap, wrap, okay. wrap up where everybody's. All right, guys, this is so much fun. It's the uh, Terry Kane episode and wrap up of the whole series. It's six and seven in the whole series. Uh, dumb People Town. Stay with us. Stick around. Make a sound. There's more Dumb People Town. We have to talk about Quip because it's um, great. It's great. I've been brushing my teeth one extra time every mm-hmm. day. I quipped it today. I have. I have. More I love time. their toothpaste. My kids quip it. I love, I love their. their my kids love the watermelon flavored toothpaste that yep. they get. Yep. You get a new brush head every three months. Mm-hmm. You get a new battery every three months. Mm-hmm. You get uh, toothpaste and floss every three months. You don't have to think about it, especially in times like now where you don't want to have to go down to the drugstore and get that new toothpaste. Mm-hmm. I feel better when I know that my habits, my health habits, are good. So, like when I brush my teeth, that's with the, the quip. thing we can control right now. And Quip has it. Uh, it first of all. We know that it comes in a very cool. I love. Remember, we had a, a story where a woman married her chandelier. Yeah. On Double Down, we now all you, made you fun of her. That now? Then I was like, all right, I get it because I love my quip and I love the shape. I love how it feels in my hand. I, I was a quip it. user long before they started sponsoring the, sh- the uh, podcast, and I'll tell you, I will never not use it ever again. We travel with it; it's easy. The battery, it's sleek; it looks really cool. And uh, our dental appointments are shorter. My kids are what being I like a lot is of you don't teeth. run having your stuff for way too long because Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste every refills three to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine is always right. And join over three million healthy mouths and go co- get Quip today, starting at twenty five dollars. Affordable, if, yeah. And if you get Quip, if you go to getquip.com slash dpt right now you'll get your first refill for that is free. your first refill for free at getquip.com slash dpt that's g-e-t-q-u-i-p.com slash dpt quip the good habits company working remotely can be a challenge especially for teams that are new to it how do you deal with your work environment being the same as home while staying connected and productive and then there's your newest co-worker the cat well your friends at trello have been powering remote teams globally for almost a decade At a time when teams must come together more than ever to solve big challenges, Trello's here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, is an app with an easy-to-understand visual format, plus tons of features that make working with your team functional and just plain fun. Trello keeps everyone organized and on the same page, helping teams communicate, focus, and connect. Teams of all shapes and sizes at companies like Google, Fender, Costco, and likely your favorite neighborhood coffee shop all use Trello to collaborate and get work done. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Trello.com. Hey, Randy Sklar here from Dumb People Town. I know you townies out there are looking for other podcasts to consume during the quarantine. We have a great one for you. A guy who was a guest on our show was fantastic on our show, Jordan Harbinger, who has the Jordan Harbinger Show. It's a fantastic podcast, digs deep into stuff. Jordan, tell us a little bit about uh, stuff that you've covered on recent shows. Sure. In a recent show, we had Chris Buckner. Now, this guy investigates counterfeiting, not like currency counterfeiting, but that fake Gucci bag you got for 12 bucks. And he traces it all the way back to organized crime. So you think you're buying it from a little old lady in Chinatown or, you know, at some market, but you're giving money to MS-13 or something like that, who's then, you know, potentially giving it to organized crime or even terrorist groups like Al Qaeda. I used to think that was hyperbole, but it turns out it's not. And it's not just wallets and handbags. There are airbags where when they go off, they'll friggin' go straight through your head and kill you because there's just metal pieces in them. Or cancer drugs that don't have any active ingredient in it. So it gets a little nefarious and evil. Cool. And it, it quickly ends at the old lady who you think you're helping out and kind of get, like gets really devious really quick, especially since those same smuggling networks that they use to get the goods in are also known to smuggle in drugs, guns, and even people. Well, I'm a huge fan of the show McMillions just having watched all of it. And I know the best part about it that our fans will really relate to is that anybody who thinks they're smart is usually pretty dumb. Yeah, I can agree with that. That's the whole criminal thing is like the Dunning-Kruger effect, right? Like, I'm so smart, I'll never get caught doing this. And it's like, well, it's really, really obvious when somebody with two brain cells to rub together kind of comes through and investigates this. Well, I love this. For fans of ours, you will love this show as something new to check out, The Jordan Harbinger Show. Check it out. 
Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, final segment. Dan's got By the some way, updates. Thank you to all the new people. We did this fantastic benefit this past weekend. I hope people are giving oh, yeah. to that. Uh, Comedy gives back. It was a chance to sort of help out people like us who have lost a ton. Although it didn't help us out, but it like helps out people like us comedians who make their livelihood on the road, which that's a mm -hmm. huge portion of what both of us all what three we all of us do. do. We've, we've lost a lot of money and we know people who've lost even more. And so, so we're, we wanted to give watching. back and we did like a short 10 minute segment in there, a dumb people town, one story. And it was great. And I think it, it got a lot of new people onto this show. Sure. So if you're a new person on the show, what we really do is go three stories and we go through all of them. This, this was is just, sort of an atypical episode because but we we're, encourage you to go back and listen to some of the older episodes we have in our catalog and just uh, get an idea for what the show is. And we really appreciate all the new people that are here. Dan, let's wrap this okay, thing here up. Here we go. Uh, some of these are coming from Netflix. Okay. Here's, uh, I'm going to read some of these tweets. Hey, all you ca cool cats and kittens, if you finish Tiger King, Here's wait, wait, can Netflix say that? That's her <laughs> phrase. Yeah, She's she Netflix. Gonna She's going to put those you words don't get together. Sued. Uh, Joe Exotic was sentenced to 22 years in prison. He's representing himself in his latest lawsuit against Great. the feds in which he demanded $94 million for false imprisonment, false arrest, perjury, and entrapment. He'll get it. Jeff Lowe still owns and operates the Wynwood Animal Park with his wife, Lauren. How is Jeff Lowe still walking and this earth? According to an update from Lauren on Instagram, she and Jeff are still together and planning on opening their next zoo in Oklahoma in the summer of 2020. So nope. this is the moment where I say I don't like the internet when its trolls are out, but Jeff Lowe... You should get a couple death threats. Yeah. I think that's okay. I here, think that, here's if, what I'm the internet, say. if you're out there and you want to give Jeff Lowe some death threats, here's I'm what I'm fine with that. By the way, here's what I say is that they're, they're building their zoo and part of me is like, great, I'm glad COVID-19 is going to keep people away. But then I'm like, it's Oklahoma. It's not going to They don't even have a shelter in place law, right. I'm sure right now. Let, so. them, all, let them all communicate. Uh, Maybe this will be the way we wipe all those people out. As for Carol, after seeing the series, she took the Big Cat Rescue blog to refute, uh, refute any insu insu insinate... Well, in situations. I'm there you go, Dan. Mind, <laughs> uh, that she might have killed her husband. She claimed. Oh, good. It's she, coming from you. She called the claims that she fed her late husband to the cats the most ludicrous of all the lies, which means she's admitting there's a lot of There's them. a lot of lies. Uh, Doc Annell still owns and operates Myrtle Beach Safari no. with his partners. As of March 28th, the park remained open. No. That's the 28th of March. The 28th of March. Saying, okay. He said, quote, 50 acre preserve provides plenty of area for social distance. Oh, shut As up. As for Rick Dumb. Kirkman, our Bert Rick Sugar Kirkman. Man, Bert Kirkman. Kirk Ham. The reality Kirk show producer. Ham. Kirk yeah, Ham. Yeah, Kirk Ham. Yeah. He, he uh, was shooting Joe's show. He currently lives in Norway with his wife. According to Variety, he's making lots of reindeer... Uh, according to Variety, he's making lots of reindeer stew and working on a documentary about a man with an exciting double life. Are you that guy, Rick? Jesus. Um, I'm working with a man on an exciting double life. Things are looking up for Joe's ex-husband, John Finlay. He got uh, new teeth. Yep. He, got he new teeth. has new dentures and is working as a welder. He lives with his fiance Stormy. Oh, Daniels? Oh. Uh, despite remaining cr relatively quiet. Is that a man or a woman, Stormy? I think it's a girl. Assuming it's a, girl, it's a woman. I believe, yes. It's not the one he left the park with and got pregnant, but good for him. She was the secretary. Yeah. Uh, despite remaining relatively quiet on social media, Joe's current husband, Dylan Passage, recently posted, I'm still married to Joe, but my social media platform isn't used for any Joe things. Oh, so he's got other stuff he's trying to promote. Yeah. yeah. My album. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys, oh, here we go. One, here's another thing. This is from Robert Moore, uh, who did a, a full like podcast all about Joe a few years ago. One, yeah. Joe did not write or sing any of those country songs. Okay, so see. This is from at Robert Who Moore. Who sang them? M-O-O-R underscore. I will yeah. tell you. It was an outfit called the Clinton Johnson Band. Joe just sang softly over the top of the vocal track. Oh, the Clinton Johnson Band. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That Clinton Johnson Band done took everything away from me. Clinton and Johnson, two Democratic presidents yep. of our country. <laughs> uh, before Joe married John or Travis, he married another young straight guy named J.C. Heartpiece. Heartpiece later served time in prison. J.C. Heartpiece should have been the country outfit yeah. that did his songs. I know, I know. He's now in prison, Heartpiece? Um, at one point, this person, Robert Moore, was investigating the fire at the zoo when he in, when he interviewed uh, a police officer from the Wynwood Police Department okay, now what over the hear? phone. Yeah. The next day, he got a call from Joe Furious saying that he had gotten a call from Brian, that's the police officer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He wanted to know what he was asking about. When he said to Joe, "How? why is the case officer on the case in which you are a suspect calling you to say a reporter asked about him? And Joe said, well, he's also my limo driver. What? So Joe was in, yes. So who's his limo driver? The cop? Brian one the night, cop. Robert Moore, who wrote this all this stuff, uh, said one night in 2015, Joe and I were walking through a Walmart when a portly, bespeckled young gay man walked up to Joe, shook his hand, and thanked him for being the only out and proud gay man in many miles 
while he was growing up. That kid was Josh Dial, yep. who later ran Joe's campaign. That's right. Now and lost his teeth doing so. That's the thing. <sighs> I, I lost my teeth. I lost my teeth trying to run this, this campaign. This comes from at JT the number the JT underscore the number four S T E R. Mm-hmm. Joe Exotic's campaign manager, Josh Tile, could have had his own segment on Dumb People Town. Okay. This is from K-T-E-N in Oklahoma. Oh, good. So you know it's true. Oklahoma, a Paul's Valley man is behind bars. This is from 2017. He's behind bars. After police say he attacked another man with a sword, Josh Dial was taken into custody for allegedly cutting Paul Howerton with what appears to be a ceremonial sword that has a blade almost two feet long. Yep. The pair told police they argued and Dial started swinging. Howerton was taken to the hospital with a large cut in his arm. Dial is charged with aggravated assault and battery. There Josh. Josh. Once he started getting that bad teeth and new hair. He's like, I got to. Dude, s- he sold ammo at Walmart. He probably spent at some least time it was just a sword. sword. Mm-hmm. Ceremonial knows? sword. For a long time, Joe told what everyone. What ceremony would that be for? A bris? <laughs> yes. Bar mitzvah? For a long time, Joe told everyone he was, he was dying from prostate and bone marrow cancer. He oh. raised money from his Facebook fans for his expenses. Oh. He showed a horrifying picture to this guy, Robert Moore, but later, Robert learned that they all he had was an infected or an infected prostate dehydration and a bad outbreak of the herpes there's oh, a picture God. Of, yeah oh, i know jesus it's, it's horrible. Of who who's joe that? exotic okay, lastly joe exotic one of our most biggest things and we'll get out of here in this yeah some people are asking thank you by the way at robert moore underscore is M-O-O-R. he did robert moore put this out into the universe yes, not to us Twitter. yeah yep. okay good so, some people and this this is only 10 of like 17 facts that, he gave yeah, that okay, you would know Okay. Some people are asking, what was that weird warehouse James Garrison was sitting in? That's yes, We were asking that. I know, I know. No sign on the thing whatsoever, yeah. oh, just a purposely maybe, no maybe sign. Maybe I should give you two more quick little facts. Yeah, do them, do them. Okay. James Garrison was sitting in. It was a place he owned yep. called, wait for it, and that's literally what it's written here because Robert knows how to yeah. sell this. Tiger liquidation. What? You can see it on Google Maps here. Jesus that was people own- have lost their stuff. He gets, he gets it, it, and then yep. he sells it. Two odd facts about Rick Kirkman. One, before meeting Joe, he made a film about his addiction to crack cocaine. So there you, you go. I knew it. I knew it. I can't open my mouth because I got burned by a pine. Two, after the zoo fire, Rick moved to Dallas. Then his house mysteriously burned down, almost killing him. He fled to Norway, where he now lives. We already knew Rick, that. Rick's yeah. house almost burned down? Yes. Jeez. After Don Lewis vanished, but before Carol married Howard, she dated a guy named Jay Bakel. Okay. In, in <laughs> 2002. Where this guy go? Do Jay I, you know I, call him, I call him the everything bagel. Yeah. <laughs> Jay filed a, great Jay Bakel filed a restraining order against Carol, which included some bizarre and suspicious like sounding what? details regarding like Don's disappearance. Okay, you like can what? find it on there. It just says that he was afraid for his own life and she was worried that bones were found on his property. Oh my god. I know. So this could be the guy who had where how come we don't find out from him? Jay Bakel, speak up. Where are you at, Bakel? I don't know. I don't know. Um he goes on to have facts in here about uh other like people that that Joe Exotic knew, like this guy who was like this uh, hitman living in Dallas. That, yeah, that's how he had Joe had him saved on that's his right. phone. Uh-huh. I know. Uh, I think that's kind of all we wow. all we have. There here. you go. So yeah. there is going to be one more episode of there's the show. There's more though. People can go check them out. Well, there's going to be one more episode of the show. I'm sure it's going to be somewhat of a wrap up. Maybe, maybe we'll uh, work that into our next. Yeah, it might be episode. a mini. Yeah, yeah, might be a mini. Be a mini. Uh, this has been a blast going through this with you guys. Thank you again for watching. Hope you liked our wrap up of what it is and our. Uh, and if you're new to this show, rate and review. Uh, and subscribe, subscribe to subscribe it. Subscribe to yeah. Dumb People Town. That always helps us. This is a beautiful time for us. If the world uh, is going to be dumb and it still is going to be dumb even through this pandemic, we will try and make fun of it and uh, we will do our best to ask why. Why is that dumb? And, Instead of uh, just pointing at it, saying, saying that's, that's dumb, dumb, we say, why is it dumb? Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, all this. Uh, stay safe, stay socially distanced, lock it down. Listen to us, and uh, oh shit, we gotta get back to work. Stick around, make a sound, hunger down, it's dumb people town. Star Bands Audio, a podcast, <clears throat> a podcast network.